All right, so let's go ahead and analyze that data set. Make sure my computer's muted so you don't have to listen to my emails pinging in. Let's go ahead and analyze that data set that we talked about in the intro video. So we want to open our studio, which we've installed previously. If it doesn't automatically put you in that project we created specifically for our lab, what you can do is go to file, um, recent projects, and then that should be there for you. And you can click that. I'm already in it, um, but it'll refresh for me. Okay. And so what we want to do for this particular lab is we'll need to install a new package. So a package in R is basically a set of different functions that you can use, but not from the baseline R. You need to install this extra package in order to do that. So it's pretty simple, not a big deal. I'll give you the code for it um, and just as a reminder, if you want all of the code already laid out for you, go to Canvas and you can download this week five code handout R script. And I would put that in your desktop folder that's been created specifically for your lab. And then you can see that here within the files for your project. So once it's in that folder, you can just click on it directly from this panel here and it'll pop up in your script window here. So this is a summary overview of the commands that we'll be running today. Oh boy, okay. Of the commands that we'll be running to complete today's lab. So the first thing you wanna do, these are the code handout. And I would also recommend creating your own R script for each lab like we did last time. So you want to go file to new file R script. That'll open that up for you. And we want to start one for week five lab. So the first thing you want to do is install the package. So you would type install.packages and you put it in quotes. See what they did with the name there, capital R. Um, and I think we want to say, yeah, dependencies equals true. Oops. So you want to make sure the quotes just go around the package name. And it'll autocomplete for you. Hit tab, true. So what this means is this particular package also requires some other packages to work. And so if you say dependencies equals true, it'll install all of that for you while it's doing it. I've already installed this package, so I'm not going to actually execute this command in my console. But when you do want to execute it, remember, you can just click run or command enter. So once you've done that, the package is installed, but you need to give our access to it. So the way you do that to load the library, is just type the name of the package now. If you start typing it in, it'll suggest it for you. So just hit tab. Now we execute that in the console. And now that package and all the functions within that package are available to us. So we have the package installed. And now what we need to do is make sure the data set that I provided for you on Canvas is in our working directory in that folder that we created specifically for our RStudio labs. So that file is this one here, 8 loci underscore genpop.gen. So I have already added that particular file into my appropriate working directory. Remember what this file is in the format. It has a different column for each of the different eight SNP loci that we're looking at and a different row for each of the 90 individuals. The first three populations are from, first three geographic sites are from Northern California. And then if you scroll down, these are from Southern California. So that's the data file we're working with. Once that is put in your appropriate working directory so R has access to it, what we want to do is run this particular command in 
diversity called div basic. And anytime you're working with a new command that you haven't used before, a really nice thing that you can do is if you just type a question mark and then the command, you execute that, what it'll do is pop up in this bottom right corner of your console a help window that gives you directions and descriptions for this particular function. So if you look at this description, calculates locus and overall basic population parameters. So that's what we're essentially doing today is calculating a lot of those genetic diversity metrics that we talked about in theory in lecture. We're actually calculating those in lab with our particular data set. And it also tells you that this function, div basic, diversity basic, will actually give you results in an Excel workbook format. So once you execute this command, it's actually going to create an Excel file for you. So here it gives the usage. So we're going to have to give it the name for our in file, which is the file I just showed you, the name for the out file, what you want to call that Excel file. GP is the genetic data format. And if we go back to our gene pop file, here each allele is designated by a two number code. So there are other formats where they actually designate this with three numbers instead of two, but we are in this data set working with a two digit gene pop format. So we will use GP equals two when we use this particular function. And we also want to tell Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium test to be false. And that's because we want to use the chi-squared test that we talked about in lecture. And there are some other options for that within this particular function, but we want to do the chi-squared test that we used, that we talked about in lecture, so we will have that set to be false. So if you look at that code handout that I have, I have that all set up for us. So what I'm going to do is just copy and paste that into my script file. If you want, you can also execute it directly from that code handout. So what I'm doing here is calling the output of this something. So I'm calling it loci8 because it has eight loci in it. Just a note, R will not let you start this with a number. So you would not be able to write eight loci. It wouldn't let you do that. I tried that yesterday and got an error. So just as a note, this has to start with letters, not numbers. So what we're doing then is we're calling that function div basic. Our in file, the file we want to use is the name of that gen pop file it has to be in quotation marks. The output file, I'm going to call it run through out, and then the name for our lab, week five lab. We want to use that two digit gene pop format, and we call this false because we want to run a chi squared test. So if you execute that, So you saw that it took a little while to run, right? So while it's running, you'll see this little stop icon there. And once it's done running, you're going to see this arrow populate again at the bottom of the console, which means it's ready for the next command. If we also go back now and look at our files, we should have a folder that now is what we just called it. So if we look for our out file, we said to call it run through out by 178 week five lab. Now, if we go to our files and scroll down to the bottom, we see that a new folder has been created. It's designated with this diversity in brackets because that's the command that created it. So if you then go to your desktop 
and open that file in Excel, you will be able to view the data that we just created. So I'll cover that in the next video, but this should get you through how to import your data, ex imp install the new package, and then execute that diversity basic command so you can get a summary output of diversity statistics that we will review in the next video.